All right, hello everyone. Welcome to the sleep research discussion session today. We haven't had one for a while. And so today my focus is on circadian rhythm sleep disorders and mostly we'll focus on free running sleep and how bad it really is. So this research discussion is hosted by me, General Nguyen from Discord and a moderator on Reddit. And I would like to first thank the Discord community and uh, people who help provide the necessary information and resources as well as directions for me to conduct this discussion. Mostly the resources are from polyphasic.net as our primary website, but there are some other supplementary information from the outside sources as well. So as you can see here, this is the presentation slide if you want to follow it for easier access to different information and summaries. This right here is the original article where we will use as the primary source for the discussion. And uh, this right here is the super member website. It is the website that uh, will attempt to hashtag take down today, but uh, not in a negative way, of course, but we'll talk about it later on. So to begin with, just to give you a little bit of introduction for this discussion, the reason why I want to Host, this discussion is because I want to refute the solution to the best type of sleep that has been suggested by the Super Memo website that free running sleep is the best idea that everyone should be able to try it. This website was written by Dr. Wozniak in 2005 and it was last seen to be updated in 2010. And this website has also a primary focus of uh, saying that uh, polyphasic sleeping, for example, the extreme sleep schedules like Uberman and Dimaxion are bad ideas that no one should ever practice and only seems to advocate for biphasic sleeping, which is proven to be healthy by scientists. So the overall stance that Supermemo has is let biology dictate sleep, not human adaptations to sleep. This implies that free running sleep is the best idea because it points out that we don't need any kind of adaptations to our sleep patterns and just sleep whenever we want and if we are sleepy enough. So, so that's the case. So about this article, the purpose is that it collects, it just collects evidence of uh, circadian based disorders like uh, DSPD, which is delayed, delayed sleep phase disorders and FRD, which stands for free running disorder. So, as you can see in this article, it is very long and it consists of different types of uh, disorders like uh, free running, uh, de delayed sleep phase, and um, other things, just a, a lot of things uh, combined together, like advanced sleep phase disorder, whatever that is. So, uh, for the sake of this discussion and for the time limit, we will just focus on free running sleep. Alright, so. To correctly define free running sleep, it is defined that it is a non 24 hour sleep wake syndrome. So that means that uh, any kind of uh, sleep that isn't constrained into the 24 hour method that we have uh, been uh, having so far for all the polyphasic schedules or monophasic sleeping. So the method of this uh, article, as it gathers all the data needed, is that it sends out questions that are related to the clinical practices and it also combines literature data that are abstracted and graded from multiple other studies so it is pretty much like a book but uh, a lot more concise than that it also concludes that the treatment of the sleep medicine for circadian rhythm sleep disorders is also very possible and so far has uh, positive results there are a couple methods that are used to treat uh, these kinds of uh, this sleep disorders such as the controlled administration of uh, melatonin uh, to, and uh, set, setting up different types of uh, lighting cues uh, to suggest when it is dark and when it is light just when we have just like when we have a dark period uh, for that uh, environmental control so the diagnosis as the base to establish for this article is that uh, it says that free running sleep disorder is a failure of entrainment uh, with uh, 
more than 24 hour rhythm uh, in this uh, patients and uh, there's also a classification of uh, sighted people and uh, blind people as well uh, regarding this sleep disorder uh, it is observed that it is very rare with uh, normal sighted people like us in here but uh, it is very common in the blind people this makes sense because when people are blind they don't have a uh, retina cues to recognize the lighting and so their sleep pattern over time develops to be more and more random and uh, free running sleep is a common tendency observed in the studies in one study that is not directly from this uh, article it, it mentions that 25 percent of the sighted patients have uh, psychiatric disorders with uh, free running sleep and as it is deemed to be a pretty high number uh, given that uh, random sleep patterns can have uh, some negative effects on um, the human health. It is also worth noting that the early studies suggest that most humans have longer than 24 hour rhythm, uh, typically around 24.5 on average. So what this means is, is that uh, we used to have very long uh, rhythm, uh, more than 24 hour, uh, and not constrained to 24 like uh, what we are now. But uh, these, st these studies are very long time ago and most definitely are outdated. So not to support that the free running sleep used to be a good thing or whatnot. This is just the data that we have from a very long time. So next we have the risk factors that uh, are developed with uh, free running sleep. So it is commonly seen that uh, teenagers uh, to uh, people in their 20s or close to 30s can develop free running sleep disorder. But uh, it is very rare that uh, anyone after 30 will start having uh, this thing. Uh, in terms of uh, gender, it is not very consistent because uh, this research article documented 25 single case reports and also one study comprehensively with uh, 57 different patients. So uh, the study says that within 57 patients, 28% are female. but. Uh, the 25 single case reports says that predominantly are male patients, so it's usually hard to draw any conclusions here. Uh, the most important factor that we are talking about here is the light exposure. So uh, the lack of the time cues develop uh, free running disorder. So for example, it is like uh, working in a submarine when you are exposed to continuously low light uh, uh, wavelength throughout the day. And uh, so your sleep is dictated by uh, this kind of uh, environment and uh, it is hard to uh, differentiate uh, when daytime and nighttime are uh, respectively. And other risks that we have is the sensitivity to synchronization. So uh, this depends on individual cases. Some people are very sensitive to uh, circadian rhythm changes. Some people are not as much and some underlying factors such as neurodegenerative disorders such as depression and uh, dementia. Like some people have uh, depression will potentially have uh, more tendency to sleep uh, in the day so their total sleep time is actually uh, pretty high. Uh, we have had uh, several cases reported in our Discord community so just to cite some numbers out there. So with all that out of the way, uh, the article really doesn't have much else uh, when it comes to just a free running sleep, which is again our main focus on this discussion and not other types of uh, sleep disorder. So right now what's more interesting is that we will get into uh, super memo and uh, what it has to say about uh, free running sleep as uh, from a long time ago. So this part is very interesting, so buckle up. Okay. Okay, so first of all, I, I want to talk about why free running sleep is impractical, especially in today's society. The, the first thing that comes to mind is that the constant shifts of uh, sleep times. So free running sleep is basically you sleep when you feel like you are sleepy enough and that you, when you lie down, you can fall asleep easily. How easily? It depends on you, but uh, you don't have trouble falling asleep. So that's the main point. And you also wake up without any kind of uh, alarms used in the process. So you just let your sleep run its course uh, when it's done and it's done. And you also do that uh, on the daily scale. So 
every day you shift your sleep a little bit so an example for this would be that uh, starting from today you sleep from say midnight to uh, 7 a.m. and then the next day you sleep from uh, 2 a.m. to uh, 9 a.m. and then the day after that you sleep from 4 to 11 a.m. so you can see that the shift is uh, two hours per day and uh, you still keep the same total amount of sleep so that is basically what free earning sleep is so you just keep uh, shifting your sleep because you are unable to fall asleep earlier uh, at uh, midnight like uh, the first day and you just have to keep moving your sleep around and uh, all that uh, it's not concrete and uh, consistent like that but that's an establishment as to how free earning sleep actually is the second thing is that uh, it is impossible with uh, current society especially if you take on conventional jobs and uh, you have a social life like everyone else so uh, basically uh, it should be very easy for you to realize that if you have to keep shifting your sleep one hour or two hours like that every day then you will soon find out that you will be able to conform to any kinds of jobs that we that uh, you are planning to do uh, consistently uh, I wonder about that um, does a uh, like for example if you get really uh if you're really attentive and um you get really focused on something presumably you might not notice that you're sleepy so i'm thinking you could go like uh through your workday without noticing that you're not sleepy or you know and just sleep like uh sleep right af after you get home from work or something like that yes you will actually have to break up sleeps like that and uh that will pose more problems and I'll talk about it later on so mm -hmm. um, so free running sleep as you can see from the face value it looks like a schedule like a, a spam mile in uh, our community sleep polyphasically as much as you like so this schedule established that it has the maximum amount of flexibility in sleeping that everyone could dream for however this schedule is very utopian in that it it is very hard to practice and so far, the number of people that have actually successfully adapted to this schedule is almost close to zero, if we want to get technical. Not to say that it is entirely impossible, but uh, from the look of how omnipotent it really seems and the little amount of sleep that it gives each day, uh, with just 20 minute naps and you snap whenever you are tired, it is very hard to be able to afford to it because people end up dropping out of it eventually. Yeah. So because of that, it is safe to say that both free running sleep and uh, any kind of uh, utopian schedules like Spamile aren't meant to be stable for long term and can develop potentially some other side effects which remain to be seen. For free running sleep, we have uh, we have seen that a lot of research, but uh, for Spamile it's a different story, so I'm not going to cover it. And the last reason is that it can develop mental disorders or be aggravated by them. So any, any kind of uh, factors such as sleep deprivation, mood swings, or uh, loss of uh, appetite, any kinds of uh, symptoms that are related to sleep deprivation will definitely make this worse. Because for free running sleep, you just sleep when you're tired and when you have to break up into your sleep and your sleep is not constrained into the 24 hour rhythm, then it means that the shift will be more and more violent. So uh, from the previous example that I said, so if you sleep from maybe like 2 to uh, 9 a.m. Uh, just to ha get, get the 7 hour uh, per day and then uh, you realize that on that day you have to sleep until only like uh, 4 hours because you have uh, some social events in the morning to uh, to do and uh, whatever that is so you want to so you want to sleep 3 hours uh, when uh, all of that is done so let's say that you sleep three hours in the afternoon, like uh, four to uh, seven p.m. Uh, the problem for free running sleep disorder is that because your circadian rhythm is not within the twenty-four hour limit, that means that uh, you will have trouble uh, falling asleep at the same time again, and you will probably develop some kind of insomnia uh, as your sleep keeps getting delayed even further into the late morning and yeah. uh, and daytime as well. So all in all, this makes free running sleep not something to be practiced in uh, our society right now or probably not ever uh, unless you have uh, some kind of very unconventional occupation that allows you to just afford that kind of sleep but usually it's not practical 
So that is uh, the broad information that uh, we have about uh, Super Memo and uh, what it claims free running sleep really is. So right now I want to draw some con uh, some conclusions and uh, comparisons between polyphasic sleeping and free running sleep. Uh, so far, our community has seen quite a few successes with uh, polyphasic sleeping, whether it is biphasic sleeping or uh, or polyphasic sleeping, as in uh, multiphasic. Uh, if if, uh, if these people really want to get technical, like three sleeps per day minimum, uh, we have seen successes with uh, every man two DC one and uh, stuff like that. Uh, if you include the extended versions, uh, they still count, by the way. So uh, polyphasic sleeping is more realistic in the sense because we advocate for 24-hour sleep rhythm, which is what most people have right now. Uh, obviously, you don't, you don't want to go beyond 24 because uh, people have experimented and uh, yeah, it's not, it's not looking good. Uh, the second reason is that it helps practice uh, the daily routines, uh, sleep hygiene, whatever that we have established. For example, a dark period, like the time that you spent in the dark or in a low lighting uh, environment just to prepare yourself for better sleep and melatonin secretion. Uh, we also have uh, good dining habits like uh, we sleep uh, we sleep uh, before we have uh, our meals like uh, dinner and lunch or whatever we don't we don't sleep after that uh, for the most part. Uh, we have a uh, strict napping times uh, every day that means that uh, it's e easy for the body to recognize when it's time to sleep as you try to adapt to the schedule or if you're just uh, a fan of sleeping at the same time every day, uh, whatever the case. Uh, and so because of that we have a clear definition of uh, when our wake block and when our sleep block really are and uh, it is easier to manage our time and uh, we can be productive with our time that way uh, if uh, we learn more about uh, time management and uh, things like that uh, just to uh, stay awake and do uh, meaningful things. Uh, the third reason is that it may or may not require adaptation, as uh, Dr. Wozniak claimed from a super memo. Uh, so, uh, I mean, I'm just pulling up the tab about uh, free running sleep right now. So if you check this website, you will be able to read more about what he has to say about polyphasic sleeping. But uh, he says that uh, uh, something along the lines of adaptation is bad because it involves uh, sleep deprivation and uh, stuff like that. But he forgets that uh, sleep can be rep repartitioned and uh, things like that. So the reason why I say it may not require adaptation is that there are some schedules out there that allow very minimal or almost close to non-existent adaptation. Uh, I'm not going to quote my current schedule right now, the the, the, the sleep pattern called X, because it is in the experimental stage, but uh, from other data and common sense, we can see that, uh, so uh, if a person sleeps 7.5 hours per day, and uh, now he is doing some kind of siesta extended, which is 6 hours and 90 minute nap. That means that the, the adaptation will be virtually painless anyway, as there will literally be nothing that will be felt uh, by the patient uh, coming from the numbers itself, if that's the exact sleep need that the person actually needs. So that's one example, and you can see many of that uh, uh, later on. Um, uh, many schedules with, uh, of course, higher, higher total sleep time, but uh, the reason why they are distributed that way is because of uh, time management of uh, sleep blocks and uh, maybe just to get a better separation of uh, sleep stages, uh, which probably also helps in the long run. And the last reason that we have is the blissful state of mind after adaptation and uh, the schedule itself can become flexible. It is very easy to see uh, many sch schedules with a higher total sleep time, like six hours or something like that, have demonstrated a very durable amount of uh, flexibility, uh, especially after adaptation. Uh, even though it's not as ideal as when you are sleeping consistently at the same time, but it is something to keep in mind. Uh, after adaptation, it can be done that way. And um, uh, people have reported on feeling very good after adaptation is done, uh, uh, given how grueling it has been uh, when they are trying to adjust and when they are trying to get used to uh, all the new uh, sleep patterns and stuff like that. All right. Um... I just, uh, since you've gotten through all those points there, uh, I wanted to, um, I guess, advocate for the free running side uh, a bit, you know, just, just yep. for the sake of discussion. Yep. Um, so, in terms of free running sleep, uh, it does, um, in terms of time management and productivity itself, uh, something like, 
you can keep uh, you can keep most of that going with free running sleep uh, in theory like uh, for example if you if your goal is to do something take uh, uh, if your goal is to take a take advantage of an opportunity of some sort um, having the freedom to be able to neglect sleep for a short period of time where you'd normally get that sleep um, you know it's it's worth something um, and in regards to like insomnia or something like that um, that might occur as a result of free running sleep um, yeah you can you can but the problem is that uh, for yeah. for the people with sleep uh, phase uh, delay disorders uh, and uh, things like that they are more comfortable with free running sleep and so uh, if they are forced to return to uh, the normal lifestyle for 24 hours they will suffer from uh, certain types of uh, shocks as you say the change in in the environment and stuff like that to get used to a new thing uh, which I will address later on because uh, this point is very important and, and what makes it a very different and more effective uh, schedule of a, a polyphasic sleep pattern compared to free running sleep. Mm. All right, so this part is very uh, well, fun. Sorry, sorry. Uh, just, um, I, mean, I guess I'm having a hard time uh, uh, saying what I want what I want to say, uh, but I'll just give it one last try. Uh, okay, uh, so uh, with free running sleep, uh, you say that you wouldn't use any alarms uh, to wake yourself up, right? But uh, I mean, is that strictly necessary as far as the uh, person advocating this is claiming? Like, um, like is that a is that a specific uh, requirement of this like theory? Like, uh, couldn't you, for example, take a sort of you know like a thirty minute nap or something uh, in anticipation of a you know of a I guess of sleepiness later to account for that yeah like isn't that still possible like similar to how you uh you extend the wake uh, wakefulness with polyphasic sleep you could you could still do that with free running sleep i guess with uh shorter sleeps you obviously can... it wouldn't be as effective as an adapted uh polyphasic nap but uh you could achieve a similar effect and have the freedom of uh being able to keep going with whatever you're doing without having to worry about uh, keeping up the sleep schedule in every, you know, every day. You can actually do that. The, the whole point is that you don't use any alarms because if you use any alarms and that defeats the point of uh, uh, free running sleep because you are free running it. It's free. You're not, you're not actually using anything complicated to wake you up or whatever that is. You just sleep until you wake up. So the problem, so the problem with that is that uh, your idea yeah. And proposals seem very impractical when it comes to free running sleep because uh, for people with assuming that they have uh, they're not any kinds of a special short sleepers or something like that so that means that they will usually sleep through a long chunk of sleep what matters yeah. right now is just the difference in the time that they want to go to bed so uh, so if they happen to wake up uh, after like three or four hours uh, for some reason and and they are doing free running sleep then if they want to wake up then that's fine that's totally up to them if that is an auto wake without any kinds of alarms being involved but uh, for the most part like uh, sleep deprivation will occur because uh, their sleep uh, rhythm is delayed uh, from day to day so what I mean is that uh, when they try to establish that the time that they sleep they can, the body can get even more confused because uh, of the constant changes in sleep time so uh, yeah. because because uh, most of these people are not like short sleepers or anything like that uh, yeah. so they will usually require longer sleeps to uh, accommodate for their lifestyle changes because uh, a schedule such as uh, say you want to sleep uh, three cores each day of each core being uh, 2.5 hours that is not going to mm -hmm. be going to be realistic for monophasic sleepers without any kind of alarm or assistance uh, yeah. So far, we have only been uh, able to prove that a segmented sleep can be natural and can be done without alarms because um, with uh, enough lighting control and uh, environment to set up sleep and uh, wake uh, rhythm, uh, we are able to separate the sleep, the long, the long chunk of sleep into two different parts that uh, 
uh, most definitely correlate to uh, the two peaks that we have, the SWS and the RAM peaks. And the reason why segmented works is because it is very similar to the total sleep or monophasic sleep. So uh, if you want to do non-reduced segmented sleep, that's fine. You are totally able to pull it off uh, if you are committed to it uh, enough and you have uh, some kind of consistency. But for free running sleep, it's an entirely different thing because it's very unpredictable when you will be able to sleep for the next time. Uh, you will be able to stay up for a very, very long time if you have been monophasic and you are free running because it just takes an absurd amount of time for you to be able to get enough uh, uh, sleepiness and uh, dips in energy level to be able to sleep again and so uh, if you if you want to sleep in short chunks like two uh, three hour cores or uh, three two point five or three hour scores and stuff like that then you definitely will require an alarm to wake up right so i guess i guess then that means there's strictly no alarms in any cases so that's fine uh, but uh, there's even with that, there's still the possibility of. So, say for example, you have the common nine to five work during the day. You could still, for if you if you were sufficiently motivated, theoretically you could stay up for like uh, whenever you get home from your nine to five work, you could stay up for the night, and you know not go to sleep at all. Yeah, it's and totally then, possible. And like then, you, well, yeah. it wouldn't it wouldn't really cause many issues because then the next day. Uh, you could just go to sleep right after work. Uh, so something like not being able to sleep, uh, it doesn't seem like it would come up really because you could just extend your wake period to accommodate that and just go to sleep whenever, whenever, whatever you're staying up for, uh, whatever, you know, whenever you finish doing it. Uh, yeah, it is possible, but you will have to take into account of the delay of the sleep phase. So, uh, what you're what what you are talking about is just uh, assuming the normal uh, entrainment of a twenty four hour cycle, because uh, these people have free running disorder and they uh, and they have uh, longer than twenty four hours. Then, I would say that it is hard to apply in that uh, scenario, and, uh, and and the delay will will cause them to sleep at even a later time uh, when they actually want to sleep. Does that make any sense? Uh, I guess I guess I've sort of uh, I guess I've lost uh, what you said right before I before I started talking, and I've also forgotten my point. So, uh, so you should probably just keep going, <laughs> right? I mean, I think it's pretty clear about free running sleep. Anyway, there is certain kind of a delay in the in in your sleep that you have to uh, take into account of and not just because you want to sleep at that time you will be able to pull it off because of the delay so like uh, uh, this super memo site also pulls up uh, a lot of uh, charts and uh, data uh, that uh, if you look here you will be able to see that uh, uh, at one point for example like uh, uh, one month uh, after the original shift uh, uh, you will be able to get back at the same time that uh, you plan to try this out and uh, that is also a huge problem. So uh, right now we're going through this a uh, very fun session, which is the claims versus the counter claims, and it is part one. So uh, the first claim that Super Memo says is that, uh, I mean, it is directly quoted from the site itself, so it's not going anywhere. The first uh, quote is that in more severe cases, the circadian variables will run a 24-hour cycle, and the individual will experience return to good sleep when free running variables align again with the des desire, desired sleep period so just what i mentioned before like uh, after a long time maybe a month or so then uh, the sleep time will be back to normal and uh, superman will say that it is a good thing uh, they claim that it's good sleep so my counter argument to that is this is just similar to an adaptation to a polyphasic schedule. So you basically go around a cycle and you just return to the first spot. And uh, during all these uh, kind of adaptation changing sleep, you feel tired, groggy and uh, whatever. And uh, in all those days, just before the very first days that you feel good, actually return. So to claim that that is some good sleep quality, I have to say is bullshit because you literally have to go uh, all that way into back to the starting point and i'm not making up when i say 
uh, that when I say that uh, that uh, these people feel groggy, tired, and uh, sleep deprived during all those days uh, because of the shifts, this has actually been documented uh, in uh, several sources, like uh, in this I mean, uh, reference section. Right. If you want to look into it for more details. Uh, but I mean, I guess if you think like uh, with polyphasic sleep, you are generating constant sleep deprivation. Uh, I mean, it depends on obviously how much sleep you cut in your schedule, uh, but it's a, it's a certain thing that you're going to experience like sleep deprivation. Whereas with free running sleep, I feel like that's not the case. So any any grumpiness, even if it's even if it's present as a result of that schedule, you're still not getting that. Like I don't see like is is there actually sleep deprivation that's similar to polyphasic sleep? Are you actually inhibited in some way? Okay, so just because you sleep a long amount doesn't mean that uh, you are guaranteed to get in enough uh, REM and uh, slow wave sleep for that chunk of sleep. It goes oh, without see. saying that if the, without saying that uh, without any kind of sleep hygiene or consistency, your sleep goes out of whack, and uh, that's why night shift uh, workers have been uh, always saying that uh, their sleep quality is bad, and they want to seek help, especially from our separated and other people that we see uh, from. Uh, different online forums and uh, uh, places like that. So in no way their sleep is in good condition if they want to seek help and try to improve their conditions. Uh, most probably because of their occupation, they have to work and change their sleeps all around. So that's why it has been advised by uh, doctors for the most part that uh, consistency in sleep time is very important. Uh, but that's not to say that uh, little flexibility is not something that uh, can be done. It totally can, uh, given different situations, but uh, if you can go for consistency, then you definitely go for it. And free running sleep does not have the consistency that that uh, the regular sleep protocol has. So that's yeah, why it results I, I in uh, very chaotic yeah. rhythms. I see what you mean now, uh, because uh, I guess I was thinking strictly in terms of free running sleep versus polyphasic sleep, but uh, the benefits of polyphasic sleep uh, can be to an extent applied to monophasic sleep too, like just by keeping it consistent. So yeah, I guess, yeah, I guess you, the argument here is uh, free running versus consistent. And uh, right. in, that, in, get, in that case, it makes sense. Yeah. You totally can avoid being sleep deprived though, uh, on free running that is. Uh, however, hmm. what happens with that is that uh, you will have to ramp up the total amount of, of sleep that you have to spend in bed per day just to back up for the bad quality of uh, switching sleep around consistently. So yeah. uh, so rather than uh, what you think, seven hours is enough, now you probably need like 10 or 11 just to make up for that. Yeah, makes sense. Yep, so your sleep will be like overwhelmed with a uh, light sleep and, you, and, and, uh, and the, the vital stages such as uh, slow wave sleep and REM don't really feel that much of a presence in in the sleep at all. So that's why your sleep quality is very bad for the most part. Mm -hmm. right. All right, so uh, the second claim that uh, that a super memo has is that uh, there are documented people living along such shifting DSPS, delay sleep, uh, phase sleep, uh, sleep disorder uh, schedule for decades without major health side effects. Okay, so the first thing that I look at this is that uh, this uh, this doctor refuses to show any kind of research that suggests that that is true. And why is that? Because there is none. There has been never any kind of a studies uh, for uh, people, w especially with uh, within the scale of decades, without any major health side effects. Because to be able to conduct such a study, you will need such a long term kind of uh, scale to be able to identify and confirm finally that these people are fine without any problems uh, if you look at the if you look at the site itself uh, and, and if you scroll all the way to the end you will see of course zero research that supports that evidence right, right so uh, so that's another one I mean I guess uh, at this point the polyphasic community is kind of in a similar place to an extent uh, well, I mean, I'm, I'm just I'm just trying to point out the holes in uh, the reasonings yeah. in uh, in free running sleep that uh, this uh, so-called doctor was near uh, tried to put it up here without any kind of uh, evidence and support. Given that the site is probably severely outdated now as time passes, but that's not. Yeah. But, but we're not done yet. Yeah, I guess. And, yeah. 
and um, just to cancel out my point uh, i guess with the polyphasic community you can, there's actually a community there and even even if there's no long-term studies you can still ask people stuff it's not just one person claiming you know and that's why and that's why uh scientists have classified uh free running disorder as a thing because you know it's not normal and uh normal people don't sleep um, like have more than 24 hours sleep rhythm uh, per day yeah. because uh, if, if you actually have that then there's something wrong with you that's why it's classified as a, a disorder so uh yeah if you actually try to look up only super memo claims that uh, there is such a thing that the people living like this without having major health side effects yeah i'll believe it when i see the sources that are convincing enough but uh if mm. but if there there's no such thing like that then no i can't believe in that because uh, there is uh, not really anything anyway. Everything that you search on Google on, on free running sleep and research articles, they show that free running sleep is bad with uh, supporting evidence why uh, delayed sleep phase uh, syndrome is a bad thing for human health. It's good. Okay, so uh, this is the last part that I found, uh, at least on this, web uh, on this, on this website's uh, page alone about uh, free running sleep and, and what it has to say. So... The third claim that it has is that uh, although sleeping in unnatural hours is certainly less beneficial health-wise than normal sleep, for a DSPS patient, free-running sleep rhythm may by far be less stressful and disruptive than any attempt to fit to standard lifestyle. Okay, so it's, there are so many things wrong with this uh, claim that uh, it will probably take a little bit of time to uh, uh, dismantle everything that has been said here. The first thing that is wrong is that uh, there are actually therapies options that exist for uh, uh, these uh, unnatural sleep hours and uh, more than 24 hour rhythm. Uh, as I have mentioned earlier, the controlled method of uh, administration of melatonin and the use of a lighting environment can help uh, people return to the 24 hour sleep rhythm even though this takes time and serious efforts to make it work. But uh, the ar the original article that I provided says that it has provided positive results in the in the patients. So it is definitely something that can be worked out and can be conformed to the standard. The second thing is that uh, the patients will first suffer because of the change in circadian rhythm, like I told you earlier, that uh, any change uh, in the uh, sleep patterns may induce some. Uh, different changes in uh, mental state like uh, mood swings or whatever it depends on uh, how severe it is of a change it is but i can imagine that this being quite a harsh change uh, given that uh, going from a non-24 hour to 24 hour is a big thing at least for the patients so uh, yeah. this is pretty much similar to the adaptation process that you have to go through uh, when you try to adapt to any kind of uh, polyphasic uh, schedules uh, currently so you're just getting used to the changes and of course during the process you will probably feel like crap and you don't really feel like uh, doing anything that much uh, depending on the adaptation and depending on each individual case but this is usually something that is expected to happen so so you can't say that uh, free running sleep is good uh, because uh, there, there there is also a kind of uh, adaptation if you, if you now suddenly want to uh, revert back to the lifestyle that uh, normal people have that, uh, that you don't because of your sleep uh, and and lastly free running sleep is impossible uh, if it is to be desired in today's society because again it clashes with uh, your sleep and basically you have to sacrifice one or two things if you pick your sleep then you will continue uh, living in uh, your uh, closeted and uh, potentially miserable lifestyle uh, because uh, you are far constrained from uh, any kind of uh, meaningful social activities or conventional jobs, uh, daily interactions and stuff like that. And uh, lastly, what I want to say is that uh, this doctor still claims that it is the be best kind of uh, sleep, despite the obvious flaws that uh, he has already admitted. So he said sleeping in unnatural hours is certainly less beneficial health-wise than normal sleep. So he already admitted the weakness. And yet he still advocates that uh, people should do free running sleep because, you know, A, B, C, X, Y, Z reasons. So, yeah, that is uh, the third claim. The last claim that I want to get to is that uh, the author said, uh, like, some authors claim increased incidence of depression, alcoholism, or dependence on sedatives as a result of attempts to induce sleep. Okay, there are so many things wrong with this as well. 
uh, the first thing right off the bat that you see is that uh, Dr. Wozniak again showed free earning sleep's glaring flaws. Yes, he suggested that free earning sleep is the best while, you know, he is unable to provide any kind of long-term studies done on polyphasic sleeping that result in similar effects. Like, uh, we don't know if uh, long-term polyphasic sleeping can increase incidence of depression, alcoholism, or dependence on sedatives or whatever because there is none. And uh, so far, uh, even though it's hard to tell that uh, that uh, this is true or not, uh, I can use my case as an example because I've been polyphasic for five years non-stop and none of this bullshit actually happens. So it's pretty safe for me to say that uh, none of this will ever happen or at least not any damn time soon, not in this lifetime. So, well, I mean, yeah. depression, depression is like, uh, depression is like a part of, you know, like adaptations for some people though, right? I mean, yeah, uh, I mean like, but like, you know, like, there are people who are already depressed and they attempt adaptation. It's not even the first thing that comes to my mind because a lot of people have depression and they want to attempt polyphasic sleeping. So in the start, they already have it. And uh, of course, you know, depression is going to get worse over time with the sleep deprivation and mood swings, yeah. uh, stuff like that. Well, so, I mean, that yeah. could be, could be, you could, you could call that increased incidence of depression. I just want to point that out. But I, but I guess the rest of them, uh, alcoholism, uh, dependence and sedatives, why those don't really make sense to me as well. The, the only study that has been brought up uh, on that website is uh, Claudio Stampi's uh, Why We Nap book. But again, that data is very, very outdated because uh, it was like a couple of decades ago when it, when it was released. Uh, and so by the time that, that uh, Super Memo wants to use that as evidence, it's not going to be able to stand strong because uh, a lot of new discovery on sleep, uh, especially that uh, the, data, the current data that the community has, such as the EEG readings and, uh, you know, uh, showings of uh, REM and slow wave sleep, in uh, repartitioned adapted sleeps and uh, stuff like that we see different stories and we see a totally different picture on polyphasic sleeping and right. uh, this uh, bad uh, free running sleep that uh, that keeps being propped up as uh, something that is heavenly but uh, in reality it's not so is that is that a claim specifically against polyphasic sleep no or... uh this claim number four here only says that uh, uh, these are the things that could happen uh, to uh, free running sleep, uh, so not basic uh, sleep at all. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So if it, so if uh, I mean like, so any uh, induced sleep. Yeah, probably. But I mean, if you look at this and you see, oh, free running sleep is actually good. But when you read this, uh, increased incidence of depression, alcoholism, you want to think otherwise because uh, monophasic sleep being constrained within twenty four hours have never have never developed anything like this except yeah, if, yeah. except if you actively engage in uh, lifestyles that uh, lead to your own downfall such as you uh, drink excessively or you use drugs uh, uncontrollably like deliberate misuse of drugs stuff like mm -hmm. that then you're not going to you're not going to develop any kind of uh, uh, you know like uh, mental disorders or things like that uh, things that result yeah, from uh, sleep yeah. deprivation that's not going to happen yeah i mean in this case i agree with you i was just clarifying the uh, terminology <laughs> Yeah I, yeah, I just want to make it a little bit uh, short uh, in here because, uh, you know, writing a lot of words in the slide is not something that I really want. I just want to, sh want to show the audience that uh, the context of the claims and uh, what they really mean in, in, in terms of uh, uh, yeah. the importance of, 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 of the message in, in, in out of itself. So, yeah, uh, these are pretty uh, central claims about a free learning sleep that... Uh, Super Memo has put up and uh, by far our evidence and uh, collective effort from uh, long-term research on free running sleep disorder says uh, otherwise. So obviously Super Memo is very outdated and uh, people should not in any way refer to this guy uh, who advocates for free running sleep as a best kind of a sleep parent at all and uh, hopefully uh, many people will not uh, we're not, we're not a f a fall for his uh, trap and stuff like that. He he is correct when he when he advocates for biphasic sleeping as being healthy. I have nothing against that. But when he says that free running sleep is a good idea, then I have to say otherwise. And we can all agree that uh, uh, a lot of uh, research and uh, stuff like that, if you just uh, go online and uh, read 
through some of the links that I have here, you will be able to see that free running in the sleep is not what it looks to be. Right. Okay, so uh, I am done with uh, my uh, presentation through all the information and all the context necessary to give you some understanding on the matter as well as uh, what the presentation really is about. And uh, if you have any questions, then we can have a little bit more uh, discussion. Uh, this has, has nothing to do with uh, uh, with uh, the presentation uh, anymore. Uh, any anything about polyphasic sleep and uh, and uh, this kind of uh, sleep pattern that you want to bring up, then we are free to discuss that. Uh, right. Um, the things that uh, uh, I guess uh, stood out to me in the presentation and you know just the topic in general, uh, I already mentioned them also. Uh, everything seems okay for, to me. Okay. Does anyone else have uh, anything to add or uh, to ask or whatever concerns that you have with uh, free and sleep? Okay. Uh, if not, then uh, I will end the presentation and uh, the recording here. So. Thanks for coming in today and uh, listening in and uh, discuss uh, this uh, article as uh, the first uh, thing that uh, that comes to my, my mind when we need to clear up some of the misconceptions about polyphasic sleeping as well as letting people know the true face of a free running sleep as well as the damage the super memo has done uh, to different people if uh, they happen to be persuaded into uh, trying free running sleep or whatever the case that is and I am happy to let people know that free running sleep is not a good idea and if they happen to try polyphasic sleeping or just monophasic sleeping consistent sleep times and 24 hour sleep rhythm is always the answer so thank you for very much for coming in yeah and thank you for the presentation